Hello, I'm Pastor Mark of Overbrook Presbyterian Church, and I'd like to invite you to spend the next few moments with me reflecting on God's Word. Today, we continue in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reviewing verses 8, 9, and 10. Three times I pled with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What really stands out to me, what I want to focus on today is this idea that Paul, in this letter to the Corinthians, says something that just really doesn't make a lot of sense, a lot of earthly sense, if you will. It says in verse 10, Therefore, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. I delight, not just I will accept or I will tolerate or I know I must endure, but it says I will delight in other translations, you may read, therefore, I am well content in my weakness. To delight, to be content, meaning content to me means that you'd prefer to have it than not to have it because you are content to rejoice or to delight in the weakness. Again, is more than just acceptance or tolerance of the situation. And you think, why would that be? Why would someone be well content? Why would someone be glad or um, delight in weakness? I think the answer to that question is in the last part of verse 9. It says, so that Christ's power may rest on me. You see, Jesus told Paul that his grace was sufficient. The grace of Jesus Christ was sufficient for the weakness that he was experiencing due to the thorn in his side. And so what that means is, as the thorn increases, as the weakness increases, as the pain, as the tribulation increases, so the grace of God increases. And so it's actually the case that some people who have experienced the most weakness, the largest thorns, the biggest challenges, are also the people who have experienced the most powerful expression of the presence and power and grace of Jesus Christ in their lives. I've shared this story before, but it's one that I just can't get out of my heart. And so I want to share it with you again. It's about some missionaries from South Korea who were doing mission work, and they were kidnapped by the Taliban. While they were being held, they were told that certain demands were made of their government for their release, and if those demands weren't met, that they would begin killing one of the missionaries, and then see if their demands were met, and if not, they would kill another missionary. And they said they got together, and they actually started arguing with one another because they started saying, if we're to be killed, I want to be first. I want to offer myself to be first. And then someone else would say, no, you're the pastor. The group needs you. God's called you to spread the gospel. You shouldn't be the first. I should be the first. And then someone else would say, no, you are gifted at teaching Sunday school. And so you need to stay here on earth and teach others about Christ. I should be the first. And so they got into this argument over who should give their life first for Christ. A couple of the missionaries were, in fact, martyred for their faith before they were eventually released back to the South Korean government. In the months after their release, the group of missionaries would get back together to 
offer support for one another following such a traumatic and trying experience. But what came to surface in some of their meetings were that a couple of the missionaries finally had the courage to say out loud something that they had been feeling and found it to be true with the other missionaries. Some of the missionaries actually voiced this. They said, since we've been released, at times I've actually wanted to go back and be held in captivity by the Taliban because as we were being held captive for our faith, as our very lives were on the line, I experienced a powerful presence of the Lord in my life that I had never experienced before that, and I had never experienced since our release. You see, they were so hungry for that powerful, genuine presence of the Lord that they were willing to go back in to that turmoil, back into that situation of helplessness and weakness, because it was in that, as the scripture says, that the power of Christ truly rested on them. Paul says that, you know, he believes that the trials and troubles that we face in this world, in this land, on this earth, pale in comparison to the glory that we will experience in our next life. But here, Paul, I believe to me, which is even more beautiful, says that the trials and the weakness and the tribulation that we experience here and now is nothing in comparison to the power and the strength and the presence of God that we will experience here and now in this world and on this earth. Because our Savior has promised never to leave us nor forsake us and has promised that whatever we face, His grace is sufficient. Thank you for spending this time with me today reflecting on the Word of God for the people of God.